Hey guys, welcome back. It's your favorite Gamble the Limp, and I'm here with the next part of Hearts and Minds Vietnam 1965-1975. I'm going to try to play through the next couple of cards really quickly. Uh, that way we should just have a couple more vi uh, videos left for this game, you know, playing out the rest of this year, and then show what the interface, you know, in between uh, the years are, because the years are like scenarios in this. Uh, one cool thing I want to show you guys very quickly I now actually have my very own The Gippy Gamer sign. Uh, Gippy's gal actually got this for me here recently as an early Father's Day gift. So I wanted to show that for you uh, to you guys. I got a real big kick that she actually got that for me. So I'm going to have to find a place to, to hang it in my office so it'll be in the background for some of my videos. Really cool. Love that girl. She's awesome. A uh, couple other quick things before we get started. I did notice on our little sheet here that I had missed a couple things when I was uh, editing the videos, The uh, some of the steps I had missed. I'll make sure and uh, hit those when we go through if I have any of those pop up during this part of the gameplay. But it's going to happen. I mean, with any game, you'll miss a little something here or there. And one of the things that I'm sure you guys noticed is I haven't been using uh, this flow chart very well, this bot decision chart. And that's because I really just, I hate to say it because I, I feel like I've been hating on this game so much, but I don't like it. Uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, where's one of these things? Uh, okay, right here. It's talking about conducting a raid with, you know, some VC. And it's like, use a bot decision for the destination. I have no idea on here where the bot decision would even be. I don't know if it's uh, under combat procedure or mobilization or the action sequence. And it's possible I'm just missing it and I'm just having a, a, a dumb blonde moment. It, it could be. You know, I, I don't want to hate on them too much over it. But there's a, a few spots here where it says use a bot decision. And when I try to use the flow chart to find where you know, that would kind of make sense. I'm just really not seeing it. I, it's not coming for me. So really the the solitaire components of this game are just not standing out. The game itself is very solid. There's a good game to be had here, but uh, I hate to say it, more than likely you're gonna end up just playing both sides to the best of your ability rather than using the solitaire components. This, not too bad. I think maybe a touch too rigid, but it's supposed to be combined with this to vary things up, but this just doesn't work. So I don't know, maybe they'll come out with another flow chart and we'll see how that's gonna work. But let's take and jump back into it, show what the enemies are gonna do. We're gonna do the same thing we've did uh, previously where we flip the top card. We already know this is gonna be our two Hanoi Jane from the previous turns. So now we just need to find out what card they have left. And they have Buddha's Birthday. Let's see this. Well, actually, we already know that's going to be the card because it is a three-point card. Uh, this one gives them three resource points. And the event is not playable after 1968. So we've got a few years from uh, this event not being playable. But no bombers may fly missions during Blues. Ooh, that sucks because I have one bomber left. And if they play this, that only gives me one round left to actually use that bomber if I'm going to use it this turn. So that is wicked. I don't want them using that. But that actually, they might not be able to pull it off. Because remember, on our previous turn, I took and forced a retreat back on their troops back into North Vietnam. So now they're going to have to spend a resource point to bring those guys back. That will be a definite one point spent for them. So, yeah, that only leave them two points. They might not even end up playing this event. Let's see how things roll off. Okay, first thing is going to be taking and determining where they're going to go with their troops, since they do have troops up there in North Vietnam. Uh, even they're going into that first northern province, and then Odd is going to be going down the Ho Chi Minh Trail. Okay, so let's see what they roll here. They got even. Even means into the first northern province. I should only be four left. Yeah, okay, four infantry. So yeah, that effectively means that I spent one point the previous turn to cost them one point this turn, bringing those troops back. So that wouldn't uh, happen necessarily that way in a uh, two player game where you're playing against a human opponent, but I was guaranteed to know that's the first thing that they're gonna do. So it was kind of worth it to me to slow them down a little bit. But that leaves them a couple points. So let's see what they're going to do next. 
Okay, we're gonna go to our bot decision here. Again, uh, previous thing, and this is where I had missed something before, where the if they do a VC raid, they'll take and also do a, what is this? A move or an attack in Cambodia or Laos. And they actually do have some Laotian troops there that can move over. So they could come around and try to attack these guys if they wanted to. So let's see what we're gonna do here. Okay, let's roll for it. I'm kind of hoping they do the other thing because I'm tired of dealing with the VC raids with no repercussions. And they got odd, which is the other thing. So they're gonna spend one movement point to move the largest bot unit concentration to attack the weakest blue concentration of units within reach. If necessary, use a bot decision to choose. I've already kind of picked where they're gonna go with that because they do have a large sum of forces here. Because down here, I already took out some of their guys. They have a lot of control, but they don't have uh, very many units. They've only got one unit left down here that I'm probably gonna try to kill later. But they do have a big stack of guys right here. So they're gonna take and go just adjacent and conduct an attack against these Arvin and Darlak. And let's see, they've got two elite units and should be two regular. Yep. So they've got a total combat power of that's two, four, six, eight against the Arvin, which is one, two, uh, six. Yeah. So that it's eight to six in the North Vietnamese favor. Okay. I was just looking at it and I'm actually going to take and run the risk of including this VC in on the attack because if it's not a bad intel, they'll be able to take and have more attack factors uh, going in their favor. So we're going to take and flip him over. And not only is it VC like an actual combat troop, but it's one of their tougher combat troops. So that's even worse for me at this point. Uh, that gives them 10 combat factors uh, located here. So it's 10 to six on this attack. All right, now I do have the option to take and try to evade, but I could only evade three of my troops and there would be one left there, you know, guaranteed to, to get murder stomped. But it's not that big of a difference. If they roll bad, it could go good for me. And we haven't had that many attacks, so I'm going to let the attack go through. Uh, anyway, we'll take and roll for the red guys first to see what they're going to do. Remember, we're looking at our battle table to see what the result is going to be. So they've got 10 right off the bat, plus whatever the dice is. So let's see what their dice is going to be. And it's a six. Oh my God. They have crushed it. Uh, let's see, that gives them a 16, which puts them there. Three units are destroyed. Absolutely destroyed. So let's just take and set three to the side because I know they're lost. That'll leave me one infantry unit. And let's grab a blue die to roll for my guys and see what they're gonna have. They have six plus whatever I get here, which will probably be a one. No, it was a three, so a nine. We'll look on our chart here, nine. That's only one result and they'll definitely take and lose one of their weaker guys. We'll go ahead and pull that out. So they definitely got big, big, big time scores there. They crushed it on that one. Okay, so one of the things that actually throws me off is I keep wanting to retreat the, the guys who lost or whoever took the most losses. And the only retreats that actually happen in this game are due to uh, combat, res uh, not combat results, but uh, events or if you choose to evade, all right? So since I didn't choose to evade, I don't have a retreat, but the defender does have the ability, if he wants to, to take and spend one reinforcement point, so it'd be a stored reinforcement point, per adjacent province to bring in reinforcements, obviously up to the stacking limit, into the area that was attacked. So I could, if I wanted to, spend a reinforcement point to bring troops in over here or I could take and spend a reinforcement point for these guys, or I could spend two and bring some from each. And I'm kind of debating on that, but they've got such a strong hold on it. I don't think I'm gonna take and do that. I think I'm just gonna have 
these guys like hang and potentially get wiped out later or retreat back later and just let them uh, have that province so I can attack in with stronger troops later on. I don't know, it's probably a bad strategic call, but that's what I'm going to go with. Also, one thing I did forget to mention is that they did have two veteran units. They do have one more that is untried that does become a veteran unit because of uh, the combat that happened there because of their survivors. The Arvin units aren't, are not already veterans, so there's nothing to promote up. Okay, so we're going to take and roll for the next one to see what they're going to do. Again, even or odd, see what they get. They got even, which is the one thing that I didn't want them to get, which is to not uh, or to pay for the event on the card, which again for us means that we cannot use our airstrike on the following turn. And that's going to complete out their turn. Okay, I think I know what I'm going to do. Might seem a little counterintuitive, but I'm going to play this lower card because it's going to give me a free attack up there in the northern uh, province. So I'm going to go for that uh, free attack either in Thwaithwin or Kwang Tri. So I'm going to pay for an attack here, pay for an attack, or not pay for attack there, but I'm going to use that other point that I have to move the uh, Blue Ocean Fleet all the way around so they can take and jump in and react and support. So let's see here. They are in this province. They can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They can get all the way up to here. That's one point. That's a free attack, and this is going to be the other point. So that's my points for this. We'll start here with a northern attack, and these guys, the Blue Ocean, are going to react to take and jump in, and we'll move in here to conduct the attack. They'll expose the VC, which is a one. I was kind of hoping it'd be a bad intel so you guys could see what it is, but oh well. That gives them a total of five because those are all untried uh, North Vietnamese units. So they have five total on their combat units. We have three untried and one veteran Arvin unit. That gives us five plus the American artillery. It's helping us seven plus the blue water reaction uh, force jumping in that gives us nine so nine to five on the attack we're not they're not retreating because they'd be retreating into northern vietnam so we'll just go ahead and roll a couple of dice and see what our combat results are going to be for this one come on big money for us oh that's big money i'll take it okay first i had nine plus six gives me 15 total for blue, 15 puts us up to three dead results. Nice. Uh, they had, what was it, five plus four is nine. Uh, gives them only one result. So I had one loss for inflicting multiple losses on them. I will take that. Now, since they only have one guy left who survived, he does get to go veteran. These guys all die, and then with mine, I did lose one. Throw it over there, but my other two untried guys, since they survived against a size of five, they do get to get promoted up. So I'm actually stronger now than I was prior to the fight. Their combat factor would be a three at this point, the VC and then the veteran unit. My combat factor, since I have all veteran units now i have three veteran units with at a power of six plus the artillery plus the uh, ocean water would actually give me a combat factor of 10 instead of nine that i had previously so even that's kind of neat that even though i took losses i have better troops now to take and uh, conduct an attack later on so we did take care of that we weakened them up in the north we'll try to drive them back later and now we're going to conduct our attack here. And these guys are going to take and try to evade. All right. So what you're going to look at is we're trying to conduct our attack. Okay. They don't want to take and have the attack against them because we greatly outnumber them. So the uh, NVA units are going to try to retreat. You look on the evasion table, one unit, and you're going to roll on this chart here. E means success that they were able to take and evade. L means they fail 
in Laos or Cambodia, but it'll be a success. So that's going to be a success for these guys as well. A two blank is no effect. They have to actually fight. So only a two is going to uh, force them to fight. And an R means they actually have to spend a resource point or lose a unit. So that would be bad juju form. So let's take and roll form real quick, see what they get. They do have a good chance to uh, evade this battle and they evaded it. So they'll drop back out of this province, but now we own it and we can spend some points actually trying to flip some of these. I, I'm gonna have to because I need to take control out of this. There's too much of South Vietnam in their hands. Okay, okay. So now that completes my turn. We're going back to their next card. We already know what the top card is. Hanoi Jane, I almost guarantee, yep, three. So Hanoi Jane isn't playing this turn. Let's see what this one does. This is a black. Add one resource point to your opponent's cost to save his LA or CA faction from, ooh, that's gonna hurt us in the enter thing here. Uh, you play that during the interface, though. If you spend two resource points, add two resource points to his cost instead. Okay, so they can make it harder, but we haven't had any combat going on here just yet, so I don't think that's going to affect them too much. But they do have three points, so let's see what they do. Okay, so since they do not have any guys up north, we're going to take and roll for them on this next one. And again, it's either going to be a VC raid or a attack where they're strongest. Okay, so let's see what they're doing. And they got odd. Odd is the odd is the attack. So they're going to spend one of their resource points to conduct an attack where they're strongest on weakest. I guarantee you that's going to be there. So I will be spending a point. No, I'm not going to spend a point. I am going to attempt to evade though. Uh, same thing. I've only got one unit. So I will take and use this hopefully i will not roll badly but ones are predominant for me and i don't want to spend points three three is a success since we are in south vietnam uh vietnam i'll take and just duck down here so that spends their point okay so we're rolling again on our chart to see what they're doing next and they got even even is buy and conduct the event We'll just set the card to the side to remember to, to do that later. I'm not gonna spend the two points. I want them to have one more point to take and spend on uh, stuff that they're doing. So let's take and roll again and see what they're gonna do. They have one more point left. Okay, so let's roll for them, see what they get. They got even again, and even is actually gonna help them out. Uh, they can spend one resource point to activate two provinces along the Ho Chi Minh Trail to take and move units into South Vietnam, which is definitely something they're wanting to do. So we're gonna pop these guys right the hell on over here. So now they're in South Vietnam, uh, uh, Vietnam, Vietnam, and they have uh, actually a good set of troops. They got a couple of VC guys here, uh, one NVA, another VC over here, and a stack of NVA. They've got this, so they've got a good foothold. They have a lot of troops up here in the north part of South Vietnam. Uh, God, why do I keep saying that? Vietnam. But they don't have too many troops left here in the south. So they really need to kind of shoot down the trail more and uh, try to cut in behind me. They do have a lot of VC though. Okay, so my last card for the turn. I'm obviously going to pick this one because it's got the most amount of points on it. And I don't want to have this not get played. doesn't have the best of events when it comes to solitaire. So I'm just going to have uh, one to three they select one, uh, four to six, they select two. Let's see what they're gonna pick here. One to three, they do agree to talks. You blue player may spend two resource points or stored resource points for plus one hawk. Okay, I know I'm gonna use the bomber because I can use the bomber on this round, but that's not gonna cost me. Do I wanna use, ah, I don't wanna use my stored resource. Well, I'm playing a card with five, so I've got a good chunk of money left so yeah we'll do that because the the hawk in the whole thing is like the victory point track you definitely want to keep that as high as possible so i'll spend two points to take and bump that up uh even higher that leaves me three points to spend for this turn and i'm thinking we'll do a bombing run and then we'll 
push in for some attacks uh, around the map. Okay, I was thinking about it and I'm actually gonna do a few different things. One, I'm still gonna do the bombing run because that's free and I've got one bomber left. And that, uh, that's what he's going here. Gotta take out those guys that are pushing farther south. But I need to get more control over the map. They have far too much going on down here. So I'm thinking I'm gonna spend points to do pacification and uh, flag switching, control switching. Now, if you have an Arvin unit in the zone, and I do have Arvins, yep, I've got Arvins in both of these, you can pay one resource point and it's an automatic success. If you don't, it's just US units you have to take and roll, and if it's equal to or under, then you succeed. But since I do have Arvin in these two locations, I'm gonna spend two resource points to remove these red flags, which reverts these back to my control. So that takes care of that. And then here, I'm gonna take an attempt to um, pacify this area. You have to have one friendly unit. I don't think it has to be US. Let me look real quick. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not gonna do this one. Uh, they can do it, it the roll has to be less than or equal to the amount of units that are in the hex. So the more units you have in the hex, the better the success chance. I've got four here, three, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, we'll probably go there because you can pay the difference in uh, resource points if need be, and I don't wanna spend any more resource points. So we're gonna to attempt to pacify Kanhoa up here. So I'm gonna need a five or less. Only a six will fail for me here. Four, got it. So we will take the flag and place it there. We've pacified another area. So that was one, two, three points did spend for the event. And now we'll conduct our bombing run and that completes us. They have one, two, three, four, five units, five units right here. Let's take and roll for it. See what kind of result they get. Come on, big money. Two. Oh, one more and it would have been so much better. Uh, they lose one unit. So I don't think they want to lose their artillery. So that will actually take out one of their veteran units. So that's good. Takes them out. All right. This is done, end of my turn, and it's also the end of the year, so I'll flick this back over there. Both of my bombers are spent. They should refuel during the interphase year. This is the completion of a one year, one whole turn of Hearts and Minds. You play four cards on each side. Uh, it took a little while just because I was playing solitaire and filming, but I have a feeling that the next you know, round next year that I played would go much, much faster than this one did. But the way the rule book read is that each year can be a scenario on its own. You can play just one year if you want, but for me, it just felt like so much not enough. The amount of interaction that I saw going back and forth here. Now, granted, the, the red guys had a lot of lower numbered cards, so that uh, hurt them a little bit, but not too much. I would think that you would need to play at least like three years, you know, a three year scenario to get a, a good bite to kind of get your, you know, head around it. Cause you got to think that's not a whole lot of actions, you know, oh, you're going to average right about three actions a turn and you still got to store some resource points, which, you know, that takes away from what you're doing. I mean, you can spend them. I could take and do something else right now by spending a stored resource point, but you gotta remember, you gotta spend those stored resource points to keep areas from collapsing. And I'm looking on the map, there's a lot of NVA control spread all along you know, the South Vietnam. And depending on how much control they have and how many casualties and everything, uh, South Vietnam can collapse and it can cost you a lot of stored resource points and you can get penalties if you don't have the points. So you do want to have a stockpile. You guys will see that. Uh, we'll play through the interface uh, part of the game. But yeah, I would recommend at least like a, a three-year game just to get enough of a bite that you can actually play out some strategies. Otherwise, it's just smashing your troops against each other and hoping the dice gods play in your favor. But if you play that long, you should be able to take and um, you know get a strategy going. But you know, from what I've experienced so far, I would say that you could play through the whole game, you know, the whole entirety of the war, you know, over the course of a weekend, if you and a buddy wanted to sit down, play for a few hours, you know, go out, have dinner, come back, play for a few more hours, 
you could uh, easily complete the game in an evening or a day, you know, hardcore day or a couple days. So it doesn't take too long to play through. I got to give it that. All right, but I'll stop rambling. You guys see where the board state is. We'll pick back up and we'll have a uh, interphase and then like some final uh, thoughts. All right, you guys take care. I'll catch you in the next one.